Welcome back everyone. If you're new here, my name is Brian Jenks and today we're talking about iframes. Yes, you've probably heard them around a lot lately. I talk about them a lot, but I've never made a video about what is an iframe? How do they work? Why are they used? What are they? How are they used? And why should I even care about these things? If that sounds interesting, stay tuned. You can think of iframes as basically a window from your application to look outside at other web pages. Now, when I say other web pages, usually that, be that means that where these iframes are embedded are using some form of web technology. Now, if you're on a website and your website has an iframe, that iframe can be looking at another website. Basically, it allows web pages to embed each other within each other. <laughs> so. When this really comes in handy with things like Obsidian is that Obsidian is a, it's not a web application. It's not a progressive web application. It's an Electron app. Electron is a JavaScript framework, which means that Obsidian uses the web stack, which is why we can actually write HTML inside of the Markdown documents. It actually renders, and we can also do uh, custom JavaScript with the plugin system. We can do CSS for custom styling. It's using the web stack technologies. So because we can do that, you can actually use iframes, embed them, and look at websites as long as you have internet from within Obsidian. And not just Obsidian, pretty much any web application that uses the web stack like that and supports iframe technology. So this might, this will probably most likely work in Rome, Remnote, I'm not sure what Zettler runs on, but Zettler maybe, and a myriad of other things. Basically, iframes are legit. You can use them just about anywhere and look at all kinds of stuff. So. We're gonna take a look at some really cool stuff that you can embed with iframes. The best ways to support the channel are, if you're going to do it on an ongoing basis, GitHub sponsors because they take no fees, followed by Patreon. If you're gonna do like a one-time thing, buy me a coffee, PayPal or just fine. And if you just wanna support me without any money involved, the best thing you can do is like, comment, subscribe, share the video, and that's it. So we're just gonna dive right in. I have a note prepared here that basically just shows examples of iframes that I'm using or examples that you could use. So for instance, I have a note here where I have a literature note for an article, but I also have an iframe so that I can actually embed the article in this note. Ignore the plugin playing funnily here, but you can actually embed an article, the website, with an iframe into the note itself. And where this might be really cool and useful is that if I had a same copy of the note and we want to actually know, um, want to remember, so want to remember, yes. So now we can actually have a same copy of the note itself on one hand and the other. Now I actually have this, funny enough, within this weird div stuff going on. What is that about? So what this actually would allow me to do is if I actually start typing inside of this other div here, this is, oh, that's weird here content is strange. It's probably because I'm zoomed in weirdly, but if I full, full screen this, get rid of the plugin playing funny, you can actually have a two column interface where you actually have the article on one side and the notes on the other. Now, the only issue with that type of thing is that that is in HTML space over here, which means that you basically can't use the bi-directional links, markdown syntax, or any, any of the really cool shiny stuff, but I digress you have an iframe and you have a link to the article right there. It's just a normal URL for the article itself. That alone is a window to the website. You don't like how small it is. You can actually change it from manual pixels to, I also think like a percentage so that you can actually display the full width of the screen, but we'll get into that in a minute. So that's like embedding an article. Now you can change the size to embed it for the full screen. And we're going to see that with my raindrop note. So in raindrop, I have an iframe where the source is to my raindrop and the width is 100%. Height is just, I think, the normal width of pixels for this uh, type of note. And if I render that, you will see an entire page, 100% width of my raindrop account. So I can see all of my articles from within raindrop and take notes in Obsidian while looking at the article at the same time. Hint, hint, this is a new part of my workflow. It's really freaking cool. So I can have Raindrop open, take notes on the articles within it, right next to it in Obsidian. Love it. Now I showed this next one in a prior video, 
Ginkgo app, because it is a web app, I can actually edit my documents within Obsidian if I so chose. I still would really rather prefer to have a app a plugin inside of Obsidian to edit Markdown documents in Obsidian with a Ginkgo app-like interface, but at least this is still cool. So that's Ginkgo app. Now we can also, ha, huh, interesting, insert Trello boards because, hey, it's a website, why not? So I actually have the Obsidian roadmap inserted as a Trello board in here. So if ever I'm wondering, hey, what's currently being worked on in Obsidian? Ah, here's the roadmap, it's a Trello board. Now, I'm not sure about how, how much functionality you can get out of things like this. So for instance, can I access my own Trello board and then move some stuff around and use the app, basically the, the website as I would normally use it from within the application? Haven't tested the limits of that, honestly, not my kind of workflow to do, but you know, maybe do that and let me know and get back to me in the comments. But you can embed Trello boards. Now here's another cool one, is actually embedding a Pomodoro timer. So one thing that is really cool about this is that if I render this, you will see a Pomodoro timer. Cool. Many people have asked for a Pomodoro plugin. Now that would be really helpful in case you accidentally change your workspace view and it resets something, but you could technically make a page for this Pomodoro timer and say, okay, we're gonna name this uh, Pomodoro and say, we're gonna make that note. We're gonna make it and we're going to insert the iframe and we're gonna take this note and we're gonna put it over here. All right, there, I fixed it. There was some shenanigans with dragging the panes around and some stuff. But if I move my face, you can actually render the Pomodoro note and so have it in preview mode as another pane and basically have your own personal Pomodoro timer as an iframe in a note, in a pane, in the sidebar. So this way you can easily do Pomodoros while you edit your notes in your vault. That's pretty cool. Just a brief interruption before we continue with the content. If you were interested, I do have a monthly now newsletter where I talk about cool articles I've found, new concepts I've discovered, really great tools that I have added to my workflow. And it's kind of like the go-to place for all of the recent and up-to-date happenings of all the things that I'm doing. And also in this article, I talk about various other things like mental health or the videos that I'm releasing. And it's also just a good direct line of communication to have a conversation with me. I also will be talking about updates and releases for my upcoming product, Obsidian for Business, where I have uh, several different tools and scripts and programs set up to facilitate the plain text life, but in a firewalled, protected Microsoft Office 365 environment. I use this in the government public sector workforce, so this could probably work for you. And if you are interested in that, my newsletter is the best place to get ahead of any of those news about it and anybody who is a patreon github supporter you will be the first to be able to beta test it as well as you will get to use it and have it for free so if any of that sounds interesting sign up to my newsletter the link to that is in the description and the pinned comment below and let's get back to the content now many of these i don't use i just thought they were really good great examples or people suggested them as examples so another one is google calendars now i'm not sure if you still have to have them public or not but you know, I don't use Google or calendars like that for anything, so not really my cup of tea, but you can embed a Google calendar and I guess do some stuff with this. I don't even know what this calendar is for or from, but yeah, you can actually embed these Google calendars inside of Obsidian if you so chose to do so. Next thing is some things you've probably already seen me do. So I got YouTube videos and podcast players. So let's take a look at the YouTube videos first. So if you easily just insert the iframe like this, oh, that's a lot of stuff, huh? So when you're on YouTube and you go to click the share button and you get you know the link or send it through text or send it to Facebook or whatever, there's actually a little button for embed. The embed is this iframe with all the default settings for YouTube. These are all just the default settings. And other than this little tiny key right here for the unique video ID, it's always the same. So if you kept a template of this and just inserted that little key every time, you'd have an easy uh, YouTube iframe every single time. There's also the podcast players. So the podcast players, same thing. There either is a uh, embed with iframe option, or you can just grab a link to the actual podcast player 
and you can insert these podcast players as well. And they've done this with multiple websites and different platforms that host these podcasts. That must be the Pomodoro timer. Now, I don't have an example prepared for this one, but I know you can insert air tables as iframes. Now, I know this because uh, Brie Watson, who I talk about occasionally on this channel, is a great resource for a lot of amazing information about information, categorization, and many, a myriad of other things. Great mind. Uh, they have told me that you can and that they do insert Airtables into Obsidian. And if you use Airtable, which I think it's a pretty popular service nowadays, I don't use it, I don't know, but you can actually insert those as iframes. Useful. Now, the developers of Obsidian also are the developers of Dynalist. Dynalist.io is a web application, which means you can, if you use it, insert Dynalist into Obsidian. Talk about developer inception. So you can actually embed your own Dynalist application into Obsidian in your own note and use both applications side by side completely. That's pretty cool. And then lastly, to finish off and just to highlight the point that if it's a website, you can insert it into an iframe, is that my last example is an iframe to my very own publish website. Yep, you can insert your own website in that looks at your notes into your notes before you send it. <laughs> Imagine the inception if I publish this note and it has an iframe to the publish, which is also publishing the note. I wonder how bad that would be. Hmm. Iframes are really cool. I hope you found this video helpful, informative, interesting. Iframes are a really great tool, really flexible, really great stuff you can do with it to just make using all of your services, applications, and everything easier because you can probably do most of them from within Obsidian, the application you're likely spending a lot of time in. Now, the more you can consolidate all this stuff into one place, minimize friction, minimize how much stuff you got going on, open over here, there, the more likely, the more productive you're going to be. So hopefully this helped you realize the power of iframes, what you can do with them, and how you might best utilize them. So if you do something interesting with iframes, or you've got some really cool tools that you're able to get into iframes that I didn't cover that you want me to know about, tell me in the comments below. I'd love to hear about them. And a quick note before we go, a big thank you to the sponsors and patrons who support this channel. It's not required, expected at all. And the fact that you love my content enough to support it and me means a lot. Thank you so much for your support. I greatly appreciate it, every single one of you. Thank you. And on that note, I will catch you all in the next one.